when we take things, we're altering land, ocean, um, disrupting a lot of habitats, but we're also overexploiting a lot of the resources um, that we need. Biodiversity, as a term, encompasses the whole variety of life on Earth. People tend to think that biodiversity covers mammals, fish, flowers, and plants. But what they often forget is that it also includes algae, plankton, ecosystems, and of course, us people. Did you know that one teaspoon of soil includes more living organisms than there are people on Earth? Another thing that is overlooked is the dependence that we have on biodiversity. When biodiversity thrives, so does the world's economy and the businesses that rely on it. The World Economic Forum estimates that over half of the world's total gross domestic product, or GDP, around $44 trillion, is dependent on nature and the services it provides. However, biodiversity is under threat. Our current linear economy has played a big role in taking us where we are now. My colleagues, Maya and Cindy, tell us more about this. So Cindy, could you tell us about how our current economic system uh, contributes to biodiversity loss? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that we produce the products um, and services and use them in our economies today is a huge contributor to the biodiversity loss we see. Um, in fact, uh, research has found that 90% of biodiversity loss globally and 50% of all greenhouse gas emissions um, are a direct result from our production and consumption systems. So There's a huge impact on the way that our economy works. Um, and this is largely because we operate currently in a linear economy. So that means that we're taking resources um, from the ground, we're making products out of them, and then very quickly afterwards, we're discarding them. Um, and at every stage of this, we're having an impact on nature. So when we take things, we're altering land, ocean, um, disrupting a lot of habitats, but we're also overexploiting a lot of the resources um, that we need. Then when we make things, we're generating a huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions. And as we waste them, we provide a huge amount of leakage into the environment of different pollutants. And so the way that we're currently operating really isn't tenable in the long term. We're already using up around 1.6 planet Earth's worth of natural resources for the products in our life. And, you know, as we know, we only have one planet Earth. So um, if we're really going to address this 90% of loss, yes, we need conservation and restoration efforts. We need to plant trees and we need to clean up ecosystems. But we also fundamentally need to tackle how our economy works, how we manage land, produce and consume products and food. All right. So how does in, in light of all of this, how does a circular economy address biodiversity loss? Yeah, well, the circular economy is fundamentally about rethinking the ways that we produce and consume things. It's about how can we move from this linear system that inherently degrades nature into a circular one that can work with nature, but even create positive benefits for it. Um, and, you know, the three principles are a way to do that, but if we think about the fashion industry, for instance, as an example, we see that a lot of the operations in that today cause harm to biodiversity. Um, we can think about production processes like uh, textile dyeing, which often uses a lot of toxic chemicals. And if those get into the environment, they can cause a lot of harm. Um, but there are you know, circular solutions being adopted to address that, um, for instance, Colorifics is a company that's producing a completely bio-based uh, dye, um, which allows us to have the same effect on, on your textile, but without any of the harmful chemicals. Um, it's really removing that threat entirely that could come from that. Um, then you can also think about different ways that we could keep the products and materials that we already have um, existing. Uh, in use for longer. So, you know, the textile industry or the fashion industry creates a lot of waste um, for a number of reasons. We have low quality materials often, um, things go out of season very quickly, we don't really hang on to our clothes um, and items for too long. But if 
we think of different business models, um, for instance, um, that can help us circulate these existing products for longer. We drastically reduce the pressure to produce more. So, for instance, if we think of a cotton t-shirt, um, if every single cotton t-shirt in the world um, was used for twice as long as it is now, we'd need half the amount of land to grow that cotton needed for those t-shirts, um, which would mean that we have so much more room left for biodiversity to thrive on its own. Um, and as part of that, you know, we can also think about how we grow the materials that, that we use. So in the fashion industry, about 36% of fibers come from different renewable resources. So that could be cotton, viscose, wool, what have you. Um, but a lot of the ways that they're grown today actually deplete the environments in which they're grown. So we use a lot of monocultures. We don't have a lot of diversity in, on the actual farms, for instance. Um, our soils get depleted. We have to use a lot of fertilizer, which can leak into the environment, cause eutrophication. Um, and instead, you know, in a circular approach, we think about how can we produce these materials in ways that regenerate those ecosystems in which they're produced. So how can we use more diverse crops and how can we introduce more diversity of species purposefully onto the land, but also just create a healthier system where the soil is healthy, the, um, there, there is no toxic chemicals used that actually attract beneficial species also to that, to that environment.